Rituals allow humans to take active roles in their daily lives and to assert some aspect of control over themselves and the events they experience. But what of death? Death silences human reason by creating a space that is unknown. It is therefore logical that humans have fashioned concepts of the afterlife and rituals that allow them to partake in different experiences of the afterlife. It was no different for the pagan Romans. Pagan Roman burial rituals can be divided into three stages, the preliminal, the liminal, and the postliminal. Preliminal refers to events that occurred before the deceased was brought to the gravesite. During this time, the spirit of the deceased was still on earth. Liminal refers to those events that occur at the gravesite. At this point, the spirit was in a transitory state between this world and the next. Postliminal refers to those events that occurred after the spirit entered the afterlife. And now, get ready for a paganistic adventure, because you are about to witness how each of these stages allowed the ancient Romans to take an active role in death. Obviously, before the ritual can begin, we need to acquire a body. Here, we see our unfortunate Roman victim, Mark Aurelius engaged in a fatal battle. Following Mike Aurelius's demise, his shadow separates from his body. The shadow is the part of the person that will eventually enter the afterlife. After death, the shadow needed to locate its body in order to receive the provisions it needed to enter the afterlife. Unfortunately, according to Roman belief, the shadow was not particularly bright. After death, it vacated its body and wandered the streets, disoriented. So, how did the deceased's relatives ensure that the shadow found its body? As you can see here, the Roman solution to this problem involved the deceased's eldest son, or closest male relative, calling out the deceased's name to coax the shadow back to its body. This process was called the conclamatio. After the shadow returned to the body, it was time to prepare the body for burial. One important aspect of this preparation was the administration of the viaticum. Roman pagans believed that in order to enter the afterlife, the shadow needed to cross the river Styx. In Roman mythology, Charon, the ferryman of the dead, controlled the passage across the river Styx. Since ferrymen on earth demanded payment for their services, it was only logical that this ferryman of the dead would as well. How do I cross the river Styx? I can figure it across for a fee. It's a good thing my relatives have been for the Viaticum. Get in. Sometimes bodies were cremated and they were placed in an urn called the Ustine. The relatives then processed to the gravesite. This procession mirrored the journey of the shadow across the river Styx and allowed relatives to take part in this journey by symbolically processing along with the deceased. <laughs> now our dear shadow has left his body and is in limbo between the world of the living and the world of the dead. The shadow will now be judged by three gods. If it was found to be virtuous, the gods would allow the shadow to enter one of two afterlives, depending on the shadow's status in life. The Elysian fields were reserved for those who had been warriors in life, while the plain of Asphodel was reserved for those who had been loyal Roman citizens. The creation of these two separate afterlives demonstrates the importance of warriors in Roman society. They were esteemed individuals who were held as heroes apart from the rest of society. Relatives placed the body, or ustine, into a grave. However, this created another problem. Romans believed the dead needed to be remembered and offered gifts in order to persuade them to remain in the afterlife. To solve this problem, Romans built septatiums, which were spaces within the gravesite that were large enough to house relatives who brought offerings. After burial, the deceased was believed to be in its eternal home. Mike Aurelius entered the Elysian fields since he was a celebrated warrior. The Romans also created ritual days that were dedicated to placating ancestors and spirits who had not been properly buried. Since Romans believed that shadows were capable of causing problems for the living, these days allowed the Romans the chance to placate angry shadows and ancestors. Occasionally, Romans were inattentive to the needs of their dead family members. The results of this could be, well, 
very bad. <laughs> Romans created the Parentalia, or festival day in which the family visited the grave of a deceased relative to leave offerings and perform sacrifices. Unfortunately, there were always those shadows who did not have a proper burial, or who had no one left to remember them on earth. Again, because the Romans feared this, they created Feralia. Feralia involved leaving flowers and feasting at the Sepotapium and even engaging in magical practices meant to ward off angry shadows. Lemuria also involved the appeasement of shadows who had not received proper burials or who had not been properly remembered by their families on earth. During this time, Romans attempted to purify their homes, to try to prohibit restless spirits from haunting them. Action! So he's walking, he's middle walking, he's fiddling. Fiddling with this sound. Uh, do we want like one to start? I mean, no, I think they need uh, to get a good idea. Oh, Give oh. us our cue! Right. That was stairs. That's called <laughs> cut. <laughs> ah, Sparta! Ah, and action! Action! Ready? I'm recording. Just give me the blooper. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite letter is an A. A for awesome. And Apple. He wasn't in this. <laughs> <laughs> Stop hitting me! I thought we were done. <laughs> <laughs>